The climate is changing. Low carbon development is an approach to reducing carbon dioxide emission and mitigating global warming. Human activities in cities produce 78% of global carbon emission. This is because most cities rely heavily on fossil fuel-based energy. Low carbon development refers to ways of shaping economic growth so that greenhouse gas emissions can be kept to levels that can be absorbed by nature. Low carbon development involves a push towards simpler lifestyles that rely on environmentally friendly technologies. Hello, my name is Isia Kadiemi Abdulaziz and I'm a research scholar with the MIT UTM Malaysia Sustainable Cities Program. In this video, I will discuss why and how low carbon development is proceeding in the second largest city in Malaysia, Johor Bahru. The city is in the Iskandar Malaysia region which has announced a goal of reducing carbon emission by 58% by year 2025. I will reflect on some of the city's achievements and the challenges it faces in meeting that target. Johor Bahru is one of the five local authorities in Iskandar Malaysia region. It is an important flagship for low carbon development in the region. The city is a regional transport manufacturing hub and a main shopping destination for tourists from Indonesia and Singapore. At present, it is less organized and much messier than its glitzy neighbor, Singapore. In an effort to compete with Singapore, the Malaysian government announced a commitment to sustainable urban development. Its goal was to attract foreign investment in Johor Bahru's industrial, commercial, and real estate activities. Economic investment usually means more construction of buildings, more manufacturing and industrial development, more retail and shopping activities, more concentration of human activities, and more energy consumption for transport and electricity. Under normal circumstances, all these will increase carbon emission. However, the government is trying to promote economic growth while reducing carbon intensity. How can this be done? And how is low carbon development being practiced in Johor Bahru? Two key organizations are leading the low carbon initiative in Johor Bahru. The first is the Office of Low Carbon Society at the University Technology Malaysia, also called UTM. Professor Ho Jin Siong, the head of the Low Carbon Society office at UTM, explains some of the practices he has been trying to encourage in Johor Bahru. We use the concept of uh, town planning, where they have already some form of a structure plan, local plan, or any surgery plan. And then the other thing is the, the climate change policy. How can we in integrate them together in such a way that urban planning can decarbonize. That, that plan basically guide us how to be low carbon. And then from there, we prepare another plan called the roadmap. That is the detailed implementation of the plan. And then at, at the moment, we are now going into more detail, working with the local authorities, with the mayors, um, with the, uh, the engineers. The second organization concerned with promoting low carbon development initiatives in Johor Bahru is the Iskandar Regional Development Authority, also known as IDDA. Together with UTM, IDDA is helping local authorities prepare action plans for reducing carbon intensity. Mr. Boyd Joman explains what IDDA is doing along these lines. The process of getting to that point is very important. So municipal planning, critical, and that's why um, we are working with the five local authorities to prepare their own low carbon action plan at, at the municipal level. Through that process, we can then say, we have done one step further from regional to municipal. They can then look at it from a point of view of how they develop their respective areas. So we bring them to Japan and let them see a bigger picture, how it's being done in a developed country. And then they, they bring back and then they disseminate and share the information. So through that process, 
IRDA can play a big role in terms of making sure that everyone is connected, as it were. Regarding what has been achieved thus far in Jehovah Ru, Professor Ho has this to say. The first thing, I think, awareness. Awareness certainly we have achieved. Low carbon society is not a new term anymore in Iskandar area or in Putrajaya area. People are talking about low carbon society. And people believe that actually low carbon society will improve the quality of life. Another achievement is the creation of environmentally friendly rural communities. One of these villages, Felder Type Andak, has been supported by the government as a model for low carbon lifestyle. The village has implemented a series of action plans in various sectors such as agriculture and waste disposal that demonstrate how a community can live more sustainably. Type Andak project was adapted by the residents of Felder and shows how the population can benefit socially, environmentally and economically through various low carbon development efforts. Among the key obstacles to promoting low carbon development is changing the mindset of those who have not embraced the need to reduce carbon intensity. Professor Ho offers some suggestions regarding ways of changing local thinking. The primary approach is actually focusing on the co-benefit. I, I think it's too early stage for the developing country when they tell them, okay, let, let us go for low carbon, let us save the planet, let us cut down CO2. It, it may not make sense to many of them. But if you tell them that there is a co-benefit, for instance, by, having, by going low carbon, you can save money. By having low carbon, you have a co-benefit of better air quality, better health, better quality of life. Uh, by having even going green or low carbon, you can do composting or you can do recycling. And then by doing that activities, you can generate certain extra income for the family. Okay, those, those are co-benefits, I believe strongly, that, that help us to uh, promote it. Measuring and monitoring carbon emissions from electricity and the transport sector is carried out for IDA by UTM and Japanese researchers, as Mr. Boyd German explains. Through the Low Carbon Society Blueprint, which was prepared by UTM and Japan, Kyoto University and uh, Okama University, and uh, NIS, through that they did ho the homework, i.e. what are the existing emissions or the um, output of um, electricity, for example, or transport. So from then on, we have a base figure, 2005. At this point, it's being monitored through the project, i.e. Uh, by UTM and Japan. But eventually, IRDA needs to sit down and monitor it ourselves. One cannot manage what one cannot measure. And monitoring is only possible once there is agreement on what to measure. Emissions from transport and electricity production must be measured and monitored. Moshet is an emissions measuring tool that is being used to assess carbon dioxide emission from transport and electricity. The tool measures fossil fuel-based energy use by category, type, and sector. It inventories electricity use in kilowatt hours and liters of fuel. These are automatically converted into carbon dioxide equivalents. The emission reduction goal can be achieved using MUSHET to monitor the carbon reduction from transport and electricity in Johor Bahru. The Malaysian economy is growing at almost 2% per year, so reducing carbon intensity will not be easy. The way forward is to create support for the world we want to live in. Reducing carbon intensity and promoting low carbon development in Johor Bahru and elsewhere will require changing the mindset of many people. It will also be necessary to agree on what to measure and how to monitor changes in carbon intensity in each sector. More low carbon model villages should be created to show how low carbon development can meet the needs of the population. Other experiments and prototype living arrangements will be necessary to convince people that change is possible. Shifting to clean energy 
will undoubtedly be important. Along these lines, Johor Bahru will probably need to implement financial incentives to encourage investment in renewable energy along with multiple changes in consumer behavior. City planners will need to explain what less energy intensive patterns of development might look like. <music>